Lisa Haven here. Well, Americans are going to be and already are forced to comply by October 1st, 2020. If you do not comply, well, that means no entry for you. And the bills and legislation were passed in 2005. What am I talking about? Well, many of you probably already heard about this, but I want to bring it back up because I think it's a very critical point that we are at in our society today. I am talking about the real ID. Now, if you've gone to the DMV lately, you may have gotten a notice or some kind of new requirement stating that you cannot fly, nor can you, well, enter any federal buildings if you don't comply with the new federal national ID called a real ID. For those of you who may not know what the real ID is, I'm gonna throw up the resolution here on the screen, but this was passed again in 2005 and it's called the Real ID Act, House Resolution 1268, and it's titled Improved Security for Driver's License and Personal ID Cards. Now this requires you, when you go into the DMVs to submit your name, your phone number, your address, stuff that you would submit for a driver's license. However, it takes it a step further and it asks for proof of residency, your birth certificate, and your social security card. Additionally, this will include facial recognition technology. It reads, subject each person applying for a driver's license or ID card to mandatory facial image capture. What does that mean? Well, that means that they have your face on record in a federal national database. It means when you go to the airport, you can have an ID with your face on it. And in addition to that, they'll have your face on their screen. That is what facial re ID recognition technology is. They have your face scan and now they have the ability to find you in a crowd. That is the purpose of the real ID to get all your information on a federalized, nationalized uh, database. And this is what the government has done. When must we all comply? Well, as I stated in the beginning of video, and as you can see in the document, we must all comply by October 1st, 2020. That means you have your real ID in your hand with a little star logo up in the corner of your ID there, showing that you are real ID and federally, nationally recognized, and you're compliant as well. Now, how are the states holding up to this? Well, check out this map. This map shows 90 98% of the states here in America are ID compliant or have at least filed for an extension to be ID compliant. Green means that they're already compliant. Yellow means that they've actually filed for that extension. Now, this is all part of the United Nations agenda. This is why they're implementing this thing, because according to Article 16.9, everyone in the world needs to have an identification card by 2030, as you can see there. Well, this national ID no longer uh, is it controlled by the states as we have with our driver's license, but now you become a national federalized agent, federalized person with all your personal data given to the feds. Now, what if you don't comply? What if you say, I don't want your real ID. I'm just going to keep my driver's license. Well, obviously that's an option as well, but you will not be able to fly domestically, nor will you be able to enter any federal buildings. You can't do any of that unless you have a real ID and you cannot fly unless you have a passport or a real ID. In other words, it's a forced compliance on the American people. And fact of the matter is they're really pushing for it. Check out this report here from news10.com put out July 2018. DMV encouraging New Yorkers to get the real ID. K5 News, July 2018. Washington driver's license change to comply with real ID. Daily Press, June 2018. Virginia DMV introduces new real ID credentials. The Chronicle, July 2018. Ohio requires new ID by 2020. Golden State Newspaper, June 2018. All California driver's license must upgrade to the new real ID. Doesn't this kind of remind you of something? You see your papers? I don't think I have them on me. In that case, we'll have to ask you to come along. Wait, it's possible that, uh, yes. Here we are. These papers expired three weeks ago. You'll have to come along. Halt! Halt! 
Papers, please. Let me see your papers. You know, here's what I find interesting about the real ID, that the entire purpose that they pushed this in the first place was around September 11. They said, we didn't want more terrorists and we wanted to better weed out terrorists from our country. So let's get a nationalized database because let's be frank, that's what it is, and make every American comply with their social security numbers, face recognition technology so we can get that. But here's the thing that they don't say is if you want to vote, you don't need a real ID. Kind of a catch 22, right? Because if you were trying to get away from voter fraud and it really had anything to do with September 11th and well, our voting system, then wouldn't they make voting part of real ID compliant? No, you can still vote having your typical way of voting. You don't even have to support or have your real ID. The real motive here then shows me that it's 100% control. What's next? Checkpoints? The government's now putting a national ID card together and they want checkpoints. We will be carrying our papers and they have recommended there will be checkpoints uh, throughout the country. Isn't that what Nazi Germany did that everybody in America was against? Checkpoints, proof, papers please. May I see your papers? It seems that checkpoints just might be step two in this entire process. But what do you need in order to have that checkpoint? Well, you need a more federalized police force. But that's not something they've ever talked about, right? <laughs> Check out this report. It goes all the way back to 2015. The first one's here, USA Today. Reynolds wants a lawless police force. Federalize it. WND News 2016, Obama's federalization of police grows nationwide. Real news right now, Trump announces plan to federalize American police department. Now, I love Trump to death. I may not agree with everything in this particular one. I just don't agree with. Here we have a federalized national ID system you're forced to comply with by 2020, or you can forget about flying and going into, well, public places like your federal departments there. And now they're even talking about a federalized police force. This is removing so much power from the states and giving it over to federal. There has to be an equal amount of power in both branches. You can't give everything over to the feds because then absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. I'm a huge supporter. I believe we need government. We do. Absolutely. I don't believe in really big government but I believe in equal forms of power to the state and to the federal. But this is just simply not going to happen when you federalize everything. Well, I'd love to get your thoughts and concerns on this. Please leave them below. And don't forget to check out my partner at getthetea.com. He literally has the most amazing detox products. The Super Strength Tea specifically has changed my life. And I would not say that unless I mean it. Uh, but I encourage you guys to check out and get the Super Strength Tea and stay on it to keep you healthy. Not only that, but the Alley C is really good as well. It helps keep your immune system bold and strong, especially during seasons like this. Well, go to getthetea.com and let them know you heard it on Lisa Haven. Well, with that, if you like what you heard, give me a thumbs up, leave your comments below and share it on all your social media outlets. Well, I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.